Hey friends, it's Deb Rayleigh with the Social Tech Team and today I want to talk to you guys about digital copyrights. Ooh, big scary words, I know, but it's important that you understand what you can and can't do in the digital world when it comes to content and how it relates to copyright or copyright infringement. So I've got a whole list of things that we're gonna talk through in this tutorial and I've got some graphics and a PDF document to support everything that I'm saying. So you can take a few notes or just download the PDF and follow along. All right, first thing we're gonna talk about are what it, well, is, <laughs> what is a copyright? All right, so we have the digital copyright. I'm gonna read this directly to you. It's the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Ooh, that's a lot of words, right? Everything, everything that is published online is automatically copyrighted to the creator. Automatically. The original person who posts those words, posts that image, that they've made, post that photograph, post that video, they are the ones who own that copyright. This involves music, text, images, graphics, anything. All right, so that's what we're talking about. When it comes to, let's start with pictures, okay? A lot of people, a lot of people just have this thought, if I can find it in Google, it must be free. Not true, that is not true at all, so let's, break that habit of just downloading things from Google or copying save as to our computers. No one will know. Yes, they will know. So stop doing that. There are places on the internet where you can find copyright free, royalty free images that you can use right away. Those websites are Unsplash and Pixabay as just two examples and there's more, but those are two examples of sites that you can use. Now, when you go to these sites, Sometimes when you go to save it or go to download it, you'll see a little box pop up that says attribution is required. What does that mean? That means if Sally Smith took that picture and she has put it into Unsplash or put it into Pixabay and said, hey, I'm gonna let anybody use this just so long as they give me the credit for taking the picture. That's all. Right, so even on those free sites, make sure that you're paying attention to the part that says, is the attribution required? Okay, so that's the first thing. Um, then you go with paid stock photos. Okay, what do those look like? Well, places like Shutterstock or iStock Photo, those have high resolution images. That is so important because when you're creating something or you're putting something out there, particularly for your business or your brand, you want it to be crisp. You want it to look sharp and high resolution images are exactly what you're looking for. When you do the, what, what people often do when they do the, oh, I'm just gonna go to Google and download it, those are low resolution images, what you're doing. And then as more people start recycling that content, the quality of those images becomes less and less and less and they become blurry and grainy and that is not what you're wanting. So if you go with Unsplash, the free ones, uh, those are high resolution or if you go with a paid version because maybe you didn't find what you needed in the free version, you're like, oh, but iStock over here has this great picture of a bunny coming out of a hat. I wanna use that. Then you might have to pay for it. It could be that you're paying a couple dollars. It could be that you're paying a dozen dollars. I don't know. Even if you're in Canva, sometimes you'll find that in Canva where you have to pay a dollar here or there or three dollars to use an image. If you don't pay, and you try to download that image, it's not that you can't download it, but it's got a big watermark across it. Sometimes it's abundantly visible and sometimes it's faintly visible. But I guarantee you, you have seen pictures of graphics that people have made where they have used free, not free, they have used paid for versions and not paid. And that's because they either Googled it and found it that way and they just didn't want to pay for it or they found it through these sites and chose not to pay for it. Those are not great quality images. Those, it is not legal for you to use those and pass them off as your own or to put them in business branding materials. And uh, it doesn't help you in branding yourself when you're doing that, all right? So that's as far as pictures go. Now, what about a picture that someone else took? So it's not something you found on the internet, but it's, you know, your friend took a picture of a flower in her front yard. And what if you wanna use that? If 
you did not take the picture yourself, you need to ask permission. You don't know who's gonna come back and say, hey, don't be using my stuff. Maybe she took it for her own branding. Always, always, always ask for permission. In all of this, ask for permission. If you don't have it, do not use it, all right? It is not yours to use. So um, we've covered pictures that come from friends, pictures that come from um, free versions, paid for versions, and then of course we always get this, what about if I find it on Pinterest? Okay, that's just like finding it on Google. You guys cannot do that. You can't, you can't just download things from Pinterest either. <laughs> if it doesn't come from an explicitly free site um, or you have not paid for it, or it is not from a friend where you have asked permission, you should not be using those images. All right, so when it comes to, oh, the other, uh, one other thing about images. If you're using uh, free images or even paid for versions, right? Because there's a different type of paid for version. You have the paid for for personal use, and then you have paid for for commercial use. So be sure you're paying attention to the type of uh, copyright license that you're purchasing when you're purchasing, and it does cost a little bit more if you're using the commercial license. So a personal would be if you're posting it in a blog or you're posting it on social media, okay? But pay attention to this caveat. If you are posting it that is related to selling something, in other words, if you are making a um, promotion or selling a product and you're including that as the background, anything that involves uh, a potential for increasing your business versus increasing awareness, right? Increasing growth financially in your business versus increasing growth of followers and th things like that, two totally different things. If it is going to increase the um, revenue stream of your business, you need a commercial license for that, okay? And that is gonna cost you a little bit more. Uh, next topic on copyright. Let's talk about music, right? Because there was this time when you would post something on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and the music would get stripped out. So let me talk about the music. Okay, um, you cannot use, listen to this, you cannot use licensed music in branded content, especially if your branded content is advertising or selling something. You cannot use licensed music. So I could not put in a, uh, Taylor Swift song into something that I am making for uh, a business promotion on, for my products. Can't do that, okay? Now, what about if I'm on Instagram and I use the music feature in stories? That's not giving anybody the whole thing and there's a special relationship between the social media uh, service provider and the music source where they can use little snippets, okay? Those little snippets that's the relationship that they have. And, and as long as you're using the tools in the right way, in the right path to get the music in there, you're gonna be fine. Um, what happens if you use music that's licensed? And you think, oh, I got away with it. Okay, well, here's what could happen. Number one, your account could get suspended. Number two, you could get slapped with fines. For any of you who are um, in your 40s, like me, you might remember way back when I think even before iTunes, there was this little site called Napster. And people would go and download licensed music all the time and then there was a big to do about it. Cause you know what, those artists and musicians are like, hey, people are taking our music that we have put blood, sweat and tears and years into and they're just taking it for free and using it for their own benefit and their own gain and giving us no, uh, no, no um, arbitration, not arbitration, is that the word I'm thinking of? No credit, right, for lack of a better word. They're not citing the source, so to speak, and they're not getting any money. So you cannot use licensed music for your business promotions, okay, or your advertising. Now, um, what about something that you have purchased, uh, say through iTunes or the Apple Store, and you wanna use that through an app, and like, a, like InShot, and you wanna put that in the behind the scenes. Again, cannot do it. The apps all have music that you can use built into the app, and those are fine. Other places where you can find free music that you can use, royalty-free music, copyright-free music, if you go to, for example, the YouTube uh, sound library, all the music in there is available for you to use. You can put those in your videos, okay? So look for sources like that um, for your music. Okay? There's other sources out there and I've listed them in the, in the PDF, but pay attention to that. 
Next topic, verbiage. Oh, verbiage. This is a big one. You know how many times I have seen, either seen people just blatantly copy and paste someone's status post and posted it as themselves, as if they wrote it with no uh, citing of the source whatsoever, or they've said, hey, I'm just gonna copy this part of it and use it. Well, that's also not what you need to do. Uh, that is plagiarism. Plagiarism is when you have five consecutive words together, that can be considered plagiarism. So you can't even look at somebody's post and go, oh, well, that sounds good. I'm just gonna use this little part. Nope, that's not how it works. Now you can read somebody's book and go, oh, that was a really good idea. You really should just sit in that for a little bit and say, oh, you know, I mean, you can like other people's ideas and I'm not saying you can't use somebody else's idea because you can't really copyright an idea. Once it gets on the paper, once it's on the screen, it's got the copyright on it. So you need to say, okay, well, how can I completely like throw that in the air and jumble it all around and come up with my own words and my own way of communicating that same concept? right? Maybe it's, maybe you don't write it out. Maybe you make a video. Maybe you uh, create a graphic. Maybe you do something else, but you need to be taking those thoughts and communicating it to your audience as if you are talking to your audience. When you're copying and pasting things, that is not your normal way of speaking. You need to communicate just as you speak, and we all communicate in a completely different way. So that would be the encouragement there is verbiage. Now, if you really, really love what somebody else has written, options that you have, sharing the post. That means sharing it from the source. So if you find it in a group or you find it somewhere else, you know, you're gonna be struggling there to share it because you can't share from those places. But if it's on somebody's personal timeline, if the privacy settings are right, or if it's on their business page, share it from the source. Um, and when you share that, then you can add your own commentary of like, oh, this was so well written. I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, you know, thank you, Monica, for th this great, you know, verbiage, or thank you for this, you know, great summary of what's to come. You know, acknowledge who is creating that and share it. Um, then you also could, if you find just an excerpt of it, take the excerpt, put quotation marks around it, cite your source. That's the biggest thing, cite the source. It's just like in school, if you're having to write a paper, you know, if you get busted copying a paper, that's no good. You know, people spend a lot of time thinking, creating, having intentionality in what they're putting together and putting uh, on paper. And it is really, um, I mean, aside from copyright, it's just disrespectful to just take things that people have and you know, put it out there as if you've created it. So cite your source, share the content. If you're using excerpts, use quotations and cite your source. Um, let's see here. Images from other brands. Mm, that's a good one. So find if you find images out there or video out there from other brands, again, ask permission, share from the source, keep it intact. Do not remove uh, watermarks of that business. Do not remove websites of that business if they're already on there. Don't modify it or edit it in any way that was not your creation to do that. You do not have permission to do that. Again, share from the source, add your own commentary in the captions, all right? What about video? Mm, this is a good one. So video, as we've said with all of these others, share from the source. Share the YouTube link from the source uh, give your own commentary. If you have permission to download and utilize that video and post it, again, that's fine to do in most cases, so long as you have the permission, but cite the original source where people can find more information. If you're adding to that, again, don't uh, manipulate or modify the video that you did not make. Um, and ask permission if you can put an intro and an exit to it, and if you can do those two things. If they say no, don't do it. If they say yes, that's fine, but keep the integrity of the original video, the original video, okay? So we've covered lots of things in this quick 15 minutes. We've covered images, video, uh, gra oh, graphics. I need to talk about graphics. I haven't talked about that. Um, okay. Last thing, let's talk about graphics, right? I'm not talking about taking pictures. I'm talking about creating something with colors and fonts and uh, you know arrows and whatever else, right? There's lots of graphics out there. Some are very, very good. 
Some are not algorithmically friendly. So be careful about what you're using first and foremost. Secondly, if you did not create the graphic, it is not automatically yours to use. Someone may have created that with their own branding colors in mind, with their own branding font in mind. They've put a lot of time and effort into creating that. If you do not have explicit permission from someone who created the graphic to use it, then you don't have permission to use it. Now, just because it is in a specific Facebook group or a share group or whatever, still ask for the permission because you don't know who put it there. They may have seen it somewhere and just thought, oh, well, I'll just put it in here because I think this whole audience would love it. Do they have the permission to use it? Find out who created it. There's, a, you know, there's time that it takes to do that fact finding. And in that amount of time that you would have spent in asking the permission and doing all that research, you could have just created your own graphic and it would have been unique to your colors, your branding, your fonts, all of it. So that's the better option is just create your own. But if you're adamant and saying, I just can't possibly do that, at least go through the due diligence of making sure that you have all the permissions and that you're not stepping on someone else's toes and that you're sharing something that really is going to benefit your business and not uh, be a detriment to your business. And I say that because there are, again, lots of graphics out there, but they are not algorithmically friendly. And when they're not, you can post it out there, but it is really going to end up suppressing your reach. So that's a whole different t training topic that we could talk about for days and days and days. So bottom line on all of these things, graphics, images, videos, photos. I mean, gosh, we've talked about all kinds of things. First and foremost, make sure you have permission. Secondly, if you did not create it yourself, you do not have permission to use it. Thirdly, if you are able to get permission to use it, do not modify it to fit your own need, all right? You are given permission to use it as it is. Not, you can have my graphic, but then here you can go and modify it and chop it up however you want to. Nope, that's not what the permission looks like. So all of this comes back to digital copyright laws that protect all of these things. And it is important that you pay attention to it because people who create they pay attention to who's using and manipulating their stuff. So in order to keep everything uh, on the up and up, best to just follow the rules, best to just learn how to use these tools and create your own so that you can set yourself apart uh, from, from the pack by branding and marketing yourself. All right, guys, hope that's helpful. Hope the downloads are helpful as a guide for you. And uh, let us know if you have any questions.